Hey guys, um, happy Monday. We have officially survived. Mrs. Herseth is here in the classroom with me. Hello. We've officially survived our first day back from spring break. If we can get through today, we can get through anything. Um, <clears throat> we are going to get into lesson six and we're going to continue working with volume. I feel like we know volume um, pretty intimately these days. We've been looking at it from all angles. You guys did a great job today with your investigation during class. Uh, what we're going to be doing in lesson six is kind of cool. I think you guys are going to be excited. Well, I know you guys are going to be excited for the challenge. We're going to be looking not at just um, basic rectangular prisms. We're going to be looking at more complicated rec rectangular prisms that are actually made of two um, overlapping or intersecting rectangular prisms. And then we're going to have to kind of do, do some um, problem solving and some critical thinking to figure out the dimensions of the prisms and then we're going to be looking for the volume, the total volume of the big blobby rectangular prism. Are you ready? Let's go! Okay kiddo, so we are going to take a look uh, here in lesson six. As I mentioned, we are going to be looking at more and more complex figures. We're looking at this rectangular prism, or actually this rectangular blob, that is made up of two rectangular prisms. I've labeled those two rectangular prisms as prism A and prism B, just so we can keep the um, measurements organized. And what we need to do is we need to find the measurement, the total volume of this figure, but we're going to do it by first finding the volume of figure A and then finding the volume of figure B and then we'll just add those volumes together. So you guys know we can find the volume, I think this is what you dream about at night, by multiplying the length by the width times the height. So the volume V of A, very fancy, is simply going to be uh, the length times the width times the height. We have the height, that is three. We have the length, that is seven. We're just missing this piece. And this is where the critical thinking comes into um, our experience. Um, this width or this um, section of A is equal to this section of B. You can see that they're the same width. So if B's uh, depth or width is four, then A has the same width of four. So in order to find the volume of A, we're going to multiply uh, seven by three, which is the height, by four. Those three measurements. Seven times three is 21. And then we need to figure out 21 times four. We can just do that quickly over here very, very easily. Four times one is four, and then four times two is eight. So the volume of A is 84 inches cubed. Okay, so that's volume of A. Now let's look at the volume of B. Also, you guys, I know I'm going through this really, really quickly because it's a lot of information to pack into one video. If I'm going too quickly, please pause and rewind. Please make sure you're keeping up with me. I know it's going quickly. Um, we've been working with volume for a while, so I hope you guys are feeling really comfortable with this. But if somewhere along the line, if you go off the rails or if you lose focus, pause and rewind. Okay, so now we're looking for the volume of B. Volume of B is going to be 15 times 4 times 6. Length times width times height. So we have volume of B is going to be equal to 15 times 4 times 6. Cool. Um, we can do this. We can do 4 times 6. You guys know 4 times 6 is 24. We can do this in any order because it's multiplication. Now we need to calculate 24 um, times 15. We can do this off on the side or in the center of the paper as I'm doing it. Five times four is 20. Five times two is 10 plus two is 12. Second line here, we're gonna put our zero because it's not a one, it's a 10. One times four is four. And then one times two is two. When we add these together we get 360. Our volume of B is equal to 360 inches 
cubed. We can fill that rectangular prism with 360 cubic inches. Oh, my floor is ringing. Oh, back. Um, so I need to find out the combined volume of A and B. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to add the volume of A with the volume of B. So volume A is 84 inches cubed. We found that out up above. And then the volume of B here is 360 cubic inches. We, we can do this. It's just 360 plus 84 over here and some scratch space. It's getting a little crowded. Um, we know how to add two numbers together. Zero plus four is four. Six plus eight is not 12, 14. <laughs> Three plus one is four. So our combined volume for both A and B is going to be 444 inches cubed. Okay, kiddos. So we have another uh, rectangular prism stacked upon uh, one rectangular prism stacked uh, on top of another. Let's go ahead. So we're looking for the volume of this blobby figure. Um, so let's go ahead and label each of our prisms as A and B. It's just so we can keep our measurements organized. So we need to find the volume of uh, rectangular prism A, and then we need to find the volume of rectangular prism B. Let's check out A first. So the volume of A is going, we're going to multiply the length times the width times the height, but that's not completely clear here. We do have the length. That length is going to be um, our eight meters. Okay, so we have that. Now we need our width. We need this part. This is where we're going to have to do some investigation. This is not labeled. So our width, uh, that's how deep this figure goes back. Those are those blue lines. So it's not labeled in figure A, but if we continue here, we can see that the width or the depth of this figure is labeled on B. So if the depth here is three meters, we are going to have the same measurement up here. Okay, so we have volume of A is going to be equal to eight meters uh, times three meters, and now we need a height. Okay, so the height is going to be this space right here. We have the height of A and B. Okay, so this is where we're going to have to use critical thinking. Um, and this is where you're really going to have to analyze this whole figure. So the height of B is labeled, the so height is six, Height of B is six uh, meters. And the height of this entire figure, A plus B, is 12. You know the height of A is also going to be six meters. Okay, so that's where you have to do just a little bit of critical thinking to um, be able to find all of the measurements in these figures. So now we can simply find the volume of A by multiplying eight by three by six. Uh, we know that three times six is 18. So what we can look at is 18 meters times, I'm sorry, eight times 18 meters. We can just do that quick calculation over here on the side, 18 times eight. Uh, eight times eight is 64. Um, eight times one is eight plus six. Eight, I, I feel like we had this one in the last one. Uh, eight plus six is 14. So the volume of A is going to be 144 cubic meters. Okay, so that's the volume of A. Now let's check out B. Um, I know I'm doing the work all over the page here because Eureka does not accommodate my large handwriting, so I'm just going to make it work. Volume of B, that's V little b. Uh, we have our length is 10, so volume of B is going to be equal to 10 meters times our 3 meters times our height, which is 6 meters. So we don't have to do as much critical thinking in this one. And we can probably uh, calculate this pretty easily. 10 times 3 is 30. So now we're looking at 30 meters times 6 meters. We can do 3 times 6 is 18. But that's not 3 times 6. It's 30 times 6. So that's 180. Okay, so we have the volume of B, that's that V little b, is 180 cubic meters. Okay, so we have the volume of B, 
we have the volume of A. In order to find the volume of this figure that is made up of A and B, we are just going to need to add those two numbers together. We know how to add. We're really good at adding. We're, we're great at a lot of things. Adding is definitely a place where we feel very comfortable. 180 plus 144. We're doing 180 plus 144 because the volume of B is 180 meters cubed. Volume of A is 144 meters cubed. We can go through that pretty easily. 0 plus 4 is 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. Carry the 1, 3. So the, the total volume of this structure is going to be 324. 324 cubic meters. We can fill this whole structure up with 324 cubes that measure um, one meter on each side. Cool? Let's check. Oh, you guys, this problem is so awesome. Uh, let's take a look at it. So a fish tank has a base area of 45 centimeters squared and is filled with water to a depth of 12 centimeters. If the height of the tank is 25 centimeters, how much more water will be needed to fill the tank to the brim? Awesome. This is uh, reminiscent of what we were kind of checking out in class today. You guys learned uh, today that uh, you arrived at this very important touchstone that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. It was pretty cool. You guys did a great job of uh, arriving at this destination. So let's check out this fish tank. So the base area uh, is 45 uh, centimeters squared. The height of this um, fish tank is 25 centimeters. That's the total height of the fish tank. But then it's filled, um, it's filled with water. Let's do this, that gray part that's, that's showing us the water. Right now, it's filled to a depth of 12 centimeters. So let's first figure out what is the volume of the gray area. Right now, the fish tank, that gray area is showing the water that's in the fish tank right now. The base area is 45 centimeters squared. The height is 12 centimeters. It's filled to a depth of 12 centimeters. So this is a layer cake. The base area, we can, I know this is water, but we're going to imagine as it as a layer cake. The base area is 45 centimeters squared. And then we have 12 layers of that. We have 12 centimeters. So in order to figure out the volume of the water that's in the tank right now, what we're going to do is multiply very simply 45 by 12. And we know how to do that very efficiently. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry our 1 over. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Go to our second level. We put our 0 there because that's not a 1. It's a 10. 1 times 5 is 5. And then 1 times 4 is 4. Let's add those together. And we get 540. So the water right now, the volume of the water as the tank, sorry, this is 540 um, milliliters. You guys know one cubic centimeter is equal to milliliters. And since this is liquid water, our unit is going to be milliliters. So right now we have 540 milliliters of water in the tank. However, we want to know how much more water will be needed to fill the tank to the brim. As you guys can see, the tank is not filled to the brim quite yet. In order to fill the tank to the brim, we would have to make, using our layer cake, we still have the same base area. The tank is not changing uh, its base area. The base area is going to remain at that 45 centimeters squared. But instead of 12 layers, we're going to have 25 layers in order to fill that tank all the way to the brim. So we know the volume of the water uh, that is filling the tank right now, but we need to figure out what would the volume be if we were to fill the tank all the way to the brim using that 25 layer uh, the 25 layers of a beautiful uh, vanilla layer cake with chocolate frosting. Remember those models that we're, we were using, um, la or I guess the week before spring break, and we were looking at 
um, rectangular prisms as layer cake. So this is a really quick layer cake. I don't know if it looks all that delicious, but do you guys remember using these models? Thinking about how we can um, chop prisms into a layer cake. We can also chop prisms into um, slices of bread. We can also chop a prism into chocolate pound cake. So this is definitely a layer cake because we're adding 12 layers um, to our original air square, <coughs> our original base area of 45. But and that that was when our tank is just full of water. But we want to go all the way. We want to fill this whole tank with water. So now in order to find the volume of the whole tank, we're going to very simply multiply 45 by not 12. We already did that here. Now we're going to multiply 45 by 25 because that is going to show us the volume of the tank when it is completely filled all the way to the brim. So 45 times 25 times 5 times 5 is 25 and then 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2 is 22. Let's go to our second layer. We're going to add our 0 because that's not a 2 that we're multiplying in. It's a 20. 2 times 5 is 10. Thank you, Arwen. And then we're going to bring our um, 1 up. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Let's go ahead and add up our partial products here. We have 5 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 0 is 2, and 2 plus 9 is 11. Um, so the volume of the full tank is going to be 1,125 milliliters. Okay, so that's how much water we would need to fill this entire tank. However, that is not the question. The question here is how much more water will be needed to fill the tank to the brim? We already have 540 milliliters in the tank. The entire tank is going to require 1,125 milliliters. In order to figure out how much more water is needed in this tank, we just need to subtract our 540 from our 1,125. We can do that very easily. We love subtraction. 5 minus 0 is 5. We cannot take 4 from 2, so we're going to have to unbundle, ask for some help from our neighbor. 12 minus 4, we can absolutely do that. That is 8. Now we need 5 from 0. We can't do it. We're going to have to unbundle, borrow some um, from from our neighbor. 10 minus 5, we can absolutely do. That is 5. So how much more water do we need in that tank? Well, we need 585 milliliters to fill this entire tank to the brim. How fun was that? Secret word, you guys, water. Our secret word is water. You guys did a great job using water to investigate volume today. This uh, problem is such a blast. I kind of want a fish tank for our classroom now so we can explore volume uh, a little bit more. Can you imagine filling this fish tank with 1,125 cubic centimeters? Wouldn't that be fun, you guys? Secret word again is water. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Great work today. Um, Oh, 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 oh,